Hey there. Uh, so I made this little game to show some functionality of uh, how you might use some facial data. Um, I'm using ZigSim Pro. This is the the paid app, like five dollar app I showed you last week. Um, that uh, using the AR kit setting, you get a really great facial mesh and lots of really great data. Um, and let me just go. Let's see here. So I made this little game. I, I intended to do something really quick, and then I ended up just kind of spending more time than I intended to on it because it was kind of fun. Um, but we can see here OSEN. Here's all the data uh, coming in, and I am selecting it and just doing some math, and then I kind of renamed it, and then I'm um, running some logic. Like for instance, face eye blink left, we can see the, the different data that's coming in for blink. Um, but I have identified like nine different expressions that I want to test for, for my game. Um, so blink, kiss, smile, uh, opening the mouth, sticking the tongue out, being surprised, which is uh, eyebrow raising, puffing the cheeks, being angry, which is uh, eyebrow going down, uh, like, like this, I guess. Uh, and then last one, scrunching nose, like this. So depending on the data that come that is coming in, I was kind of just sitting here doing the expression, and then I have all these logic chops that I set off and outside bounds. So I set the bounds that, like, where I want this angry expression to be triggered. Um, and so, so Right now, we can see the, the angry this face brow down left setting, which I renamed to be angry. Yeah, it's around like 0.2, but if I actually made the expression like, like that, so we can see that value is up above 0.5 now with my eyebrows down, and so it's showing up as angry. And surprise is the opposite, so if my eyebrows go. So for all of these, uh, I just kind of, with the logic, I played with the, the bounds that might be triggered. Uh, certain things, like for tongue, like let's say for mouth, mouth is open, right? But for tongue, I have to open my mouth to stick my tongue out, right? So it's like... So in that case, both mouth and tongue were set to one. Uh, so then I just did a little extra logic here, a little extra math, so if mouth is one and also the tongue is one then reset the mouth to be zero it's just a little extra little thing here so, so as the tongue goes on then, then the mouth actually goes back to zero so this is a little extra little thing to make sure only one expression is being triggered at a time um, I think the kiss is kind of cool there's an actual uh, channel called face mouth pucker that is really responsive so it goes up really high. So for that logic, I think I said 0.6 to 1. Cool. So I'm using this in the game. Uh, let me see if I can... Maybe want to go into perform mode here because uh, my frame rate's a little bit low. So let's go. I still see it. size fill let's do that okay much better okay so let's let's start it hit the button so all right so zix and pro is reading my face right now no hands and so as i do the expression oh. sometimes it does work There's still a lot of bugs. Got it. 
So I'm just using that, um, basically that logic chop, smile. Um, one of them at a time is being turned to one. And I'm basically testing for which text is visible. And then I'm saying, okay, is the face that, I, that I'm doing, does it match the, the text that is visible? If so, then trigger um, this explosion particle system. Actually, so it's pretty responsive. Mr. Crunch knows he's having trouble right now. Everything's just fine. I'm not sure. I, I, if other people played this, I think you'd have to recalibrate because all those settings in the logic, the bounds that I made, are. Um, I don't know if other people's faces might have different values. So it's not really. Scrunch. I'm not scrunching properly here. Um, but as a prototype, I think it works pretty well. Yes, cool. So let's see what's what's happening a little bit in here. Actually, the in the music too. This is kind of cool. Um, so from Zixin Pro, it's all coming in this OSC in. Um, but I have an OSC out. So I'm triggering certain things. Now the sound is kind of messing up. Uh, for when, if I miss it, I've got this channel I call hit, and then the explode channel. Actually, explode, this should be triggering. You just can't see it, it's happening too fast. But it's going, um, it's going over to the CV rack. Um, so like I, I'll do a more full introduction to this uh, in, in a future demo. But essentially, there is another kind of um, OSC module here that's getting that data from Touch Designer, and then I'm sending it all over the place here to trigger all the different sound effects. Uh, and then it's going out black hole, and it's going into OBS over here as I record it. So that's another kind of cool um, use of multiple programs. And just a little grid here to make this the design at the bottom. Uh, my um, my image right now, so it's just my. Actually, let me turn the sound a little bit down because it's a little bit annoying. Okay, it's down. Um, I have a normal webcam in, in uh, and as you can see, I've got this. I've got a new a new little toy. Uh, it's a little green screen thing that attaches to your office chair, which is super cool. Uh, and then it's going into this chroma key. Uh, this is a tool in the palette over here. If we look in tools and then chroma key, just drag that in and attach it. And then it's just a matter of, uh, what do you do? Right click, view. And so here's the image. So I can just click on the color I want to erase. I kind of also thought of I was wearing earth colors here that wasn't really green today. Uh, so click on that, hold shift, and I just keep clicking to try to get all the green. Uh, it's the screen. The screen's pretty cool. It was, it was cheap. It was only like thirty bucks, I think, twenty-five bucks. Uh, it would be better if it was a little bit brighter. Uh, I need maybe a better lighting situation also to shine light directly on, on the green. So it's like a really, really bright green. But, you know, it's kind of fine. Um, but different kind of settings here. You can play with spill. But that's good enough, I guess. Uh, and then I'm just sending it to a, a fit right here. And adding a rectangle. So that's how it shows up down there. So pretty cool. Chroma key. Um, this, all this stuff is, it, it got pretty complicated. Um, just to do a kind of gaming system, uh, it's, you just have to kind of, it has to be kind of a smart system. I'm, I'm using a lot more DATS than, than what we've been using lately. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm picking, so here's my master table um, of just the, the expressions that I want to test for. Uh, I've got a just an LFO that's sending a pulse 
once every three seconds or so. And it's basically just picking a, a random noise. Actually, let me just show all of the operators here and see if it's the frame rate. It's going to go down a little bit maybe. but uh, And then um, based on that, basically picking you know, rows 0 through 8, selecting that one. So that's the one that's going to be generated. Um, and I'm actually generating um, five different can see this list here, five different uh, pieces of text at a time. Uh, as the game is right now, only one is kind of falling invisible at a time. But I was kind of thinking ahead to like, oh, what if I had like a really fast setting and then they're like suddenly coming at you really fast. Uh, I might want to have as many as five you know, pieces of text on the screen at once. So I created maybe five different banks. Uh, so falling text, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and so inside here is where I'm generating the actual text. Um, so here's a text SOP, and I'm extruding it a little bit. So that's also something I haven't really showed. Um, it's making that little um, thickness of the of the text, which is cool. Uh, or if you have any sort of SOP plane um, that is flat, extrude can make a depth for it, which is nice. Uh, but the text stop is grabbing from that table. Uh, and so this is another great example of using me.parent.digits. Uh, so it's grabbing from this table null six, and it's grabbing a certain row based on the digits of its parent, which is falling text one. So let's see, me.parent.digits would equal one because this is called following text one and then minus one. So it's basically grabbing row zero. So if we look in null six, and that, 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 where's null six? Right here. So it's just grabbing this first column, right? So following text two uh, would be grabbing the next row. Following text three would be grabbing the next row. So this is how I'm um, kind of making different banks. It's generating different pieces of text. I'm actually not using this number right now, so don't even worry about it. Um, but I also, uh, so I need to be able to, as it falls, I've got this explode button. So that's what's actually making it explode. Uh, I'm actually just, this, this particle is here. It's pulsing, uh, what here, particles. I'm, I'm pulsing the birth here. And then uh, this switch is switching between the normal text and the particles. So all that is, I'm just using lots of different chop execute dats to do things. Um, so if we look here, so where am I actually? I don't think I actually organized this very well because there's maybe too many execute things happening and I'm forgetting like where I even put everything. Um, so this coming in, this is the face I'm making. Okay, so it's um, selecting so null ten expression. Where where is even null ten? God, so over here somewhere. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, great. So here's all of my logic chops coming in from OSC. Um, so fan is another chop that we haven't really looked at. If I have this this huge like a, a lot of different channels. And let's say, so smile just turned one, right? What fan can do is it tells you the index for which channel um, just just went, just changed, wh which channel that went from zero to one. Um, so if I do blink, oops, I just did too many there. Let me try it again. So like when I kiss, it wants the puff cheeks. Smile. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm freezing this for a second, um, but we can see smile is index zero, one, two, three. So fan gives us the value of three. So that's how I kind of know. Okay, which expression did I just do? I did uh, number three, and so I go over here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da, I'm grabbing this um, this full list of things, and so I know I did expression. Um, here, I had a, a blank blank table here, merge. So zero, one, two, three. So that's how I know I did smile there. 
angry. And so I'm actually comparing this text, like the word smile right there. And down here, actually, I'm not actually using that, so let's get rid of that. Uh, oh, God, it's just like too complicated to even go through. Um, all of these different banks here, I can see, okay, angry is right there. Uh, and so I know that the text in bank number three is visible right now because that is triggering something right here because it's visible. I'm using a fan again. Uh, so I know, okay, whatever, um, you know, bank number three is visible right now. So I'm sending that over here. And then I'm looking at, okay, here's bank one has tongue, bank two has tongue, bank three has angry, bank four has tongue, bank five has smile. Bank three is visible. What's in bank three? The word angry. So now I've got what I'm doing, what's visible. And so then in this dat execute dat, so whenever this table changes, this Python text is run, I'm basically saying if my face equals the visible text, then trigger um, these things. Uh, so I want to do a few things. I want to look at, I want to find which falling text bank that I want to go into to click that explode button. And to do that, I, I'm actually like forming this string here because the way I wrote it up here is, uh, falling text one, falling text two, falling text three. So I can actually um, determine that in Python. So I'm saying I'm grabbing the visible index, uh, which would be right one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm converting that integer into a string, and I am adding it. So if you're doing, if you're adding strings, you're basically concatenating. Let's just go ahead. And so I'm not like frozen. There we go, so now you can see me. So you're basically concaten concatenating the, the text together. So if I'm adding falling text plus string visible index, it ends up being falling index one, falling index two. So it's exactly what that uh, container uh, looks like. Um, and then I'm adding the string slash button one. So that ends up being the exact path for getting that button one. And then this dot click is doing a virtual click of that button, which explodes everything and kind of orders things in the proper way. Uh, and then I'm just doing some other cleanup. I have to like turn off the LFO that's responsible for making it move and reset it and doing some other things. But that's essentially, um, you know, this right here is important that if my face equals what's the visible text, then I am clicking the button that's inside each of those falling text containers um, to trigger the explosion. Um, and then that also, if we look at trigger two, I'm gonna do a separate demo on, on trigger chop also, I think, because it's, it's really, really useful. Um, um, it's pulsing that, so that's what's creating the sound. If I go over to trigger two, where are you? Here we go, trigger two. And for some reason it's not like showing up, but this, the sound is coming through though. So whatever, it's, it's working. Uh, okay, so maybe that's that's good for now. Um, I guess also I've got this other uh, trigger that's happening here, uh, which I'll talk about later. Switching between two different types of ramps uh, to create that effect of when when it kind of hits the ground. So yeah, proof of concept. We can we can use this type of stuff uh, as uh, using your face as a game controller. Cool.